Welcome inside the Acres Broadcast Center. I'm Tim Mulhaupt, and this is your Sports Nightly Ticker. Scott Frost met with the media this morning and addressed a number of topics, including how strong a schedule the Big Ten Conference provides his team. Uh, I think the Big Ten's really good. I've said this a lot. At top to bottom, it's good. Anybody can beat you any week. Um, on top of that, we play the... You know, might as well just schedule a scrimmage with Penn State on a Wednesday. We're going to play everybody that's good in the league every year. Um, we knew that the schedule was going to be a challenge coming into the year, and the kids were excited about it. And, man, we've battled with these, these teams that are all good teams, and I think we're a good team. Um, we got to win our share. Oscars football is back on the road again this week as they'll battle the Minnesota Golden Gophers this Saturday at 11 a.m. Central. Huskers volleyball is coming off a big weekend after beating Penn State and Rutgers, extending their winning streak to six straight matches. For their efforts, the Huskers have moved up to ninth in the latest ABCA poll and took home a bevy of Big Ten Weekly Awards for the individual players, starting with junior outside hitter Matty Kubik, who was named co-Big Ten Player of the Week after averaging 4.29 kills and three digs per set. Against number 13 Penn State, she recorded 19 kills, 12 digs, one block, and one ace. Against Rutgers yesterday, Kubik added 11 more kills, nine digs, two blocks, and an ace on a 280 hitting percentage. Senior Nicklin Hames was named the Big Ten Setter of the Week, averaging 11.29 assists, 2.86 digs, and .86 blocks per set this past weekend. Battling against Penn State in her 100th career match, she had 49 assists and 12 digs. On Sunday against Rutgers, she recorded 30 more assists, 3 blocks, 2 kills, and an ace. Her eight double-doubles lead the Huskers this season. For the second time this season, Lexi Rodriguez took home the Big Ten Freshman of the Week award, pacing all players against Penn State with 19 digs. She then duplicated that beat with 17 more digs against Rutgers. She added four assists in each mass match, plus two aces against the Scarlet Knights. Over to the big leagues, where in the MLB, the postseason is in the midst of a nearly full slate today. Unfortunately, the White Sox and Astros are rained out earlier, as Game 4 will be played tomorrow in Chicago at 1.07 p.m. Lance McCullers will duel Carlos Rodon, as Houston looks to win and move on to the ALCS. The Braves took a 2-1 series lead in their NLDS this afternoon, blanking the Brewers 3-0. The Rays will try to stave off elimination and even their series with the Red Sox. His first pitch is just moments away in Boston. Then out on the West Coast, the Dodgers and Giants do battle in L.A. with their series even at 1. Alex Wood will take the mound for San Francisco with Scherzer on the bump for the Dodgers. Week 5 in the NFL wraps up tonight as Lamar Jackson and the Ravens host Carson Wentz and the Colts on Monday Night Football. Kickoff is set for 7.15 p.m. That's the ticker. I'm Tim Mulhelps, and this is Sports Nightly on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Ramirez in the backfield on second short. Fake the handoff, rolling the pocket back to throw. Adrian takes a shot downfield, has a man open. It's Ramirez, makes a catch, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Nebraska! Huskers burn that Wolverine defense for a second time in the third quarter. Now Penn State back right. Johnny Parker stopped. A huge block. Nebraska, big block. Couldn't have been better time. Huskers lead. It's 2019, step two. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Thank you. Welcome to another week of Sports Nightly here on the Huskers Radio Network. Hope you had a good weekend. Beautiful weather outside today. Uh, love this time of year. It's starting to cool down. The leaves are starting to flip over. Jessica, can't wait to be in Minneapolis this weekend. They're going to be ahead of us, so I'm sure all the trees up there have already turned. Yes, I love this time of the year. And kind of in my apartment complex, the, the leaves starting to change. I noticed that last mm -hmm. night wa walking my dog. It is so pretty. I love that. There's reds and oranges, and there's still some green. It, it really is. It's, it's, uh, I love this time of the year. Fantastic. It's starting to cool off a little bit. Light jacket weather. Uh, Tim's got a, a hoodie on here today. I don't know. I'm, I'm wearing it still in the 70s. I'm not putting my hoodies on yet, but uh, we're getting down to that. Lots, lots to talk about tonight. Obviously, the, the Michigan game, the disappointment of that. Another incredible effort by the Huskers. Uh, this team continues to get better week after week after week. And at some point, I promise you, I promise you, it's going to start paying off in victories for this team. We want your thoughts on that as well. 402-413-2400. Uh, we'll hear from the head coach. He had a press conference today, and as the team prepares to go to Minneapolis to take on the Gophers on Saturday, Matt will be here for his Mondays with Matt segment coming up at the top of hour number two. And Austin Allen, Jessica caught up with him today at the presser as well. We'll get his 
take on the game. He had that first touchdown on Saturday night in that third quarter, popped wide open down the middle and uh, rambled in there from 46 yards out. It was, it was, again, just so deflating at the end of the game because I, you kind of felt it all evening, Jessica. I think we felt it all week that it was going to be a Nebraska win all week against a really good Michigan team. In fact, they might be better than I thought they were going to be now that I've seen them in person. But the Huskers stood up toe-to-toe with that team all night long. I got to say, I was sad after the game. I mean, this team deserves a win, a big win like that over Michigan. I mean, they have been doing everything right. They, The way that they're preparing, the way they've handled everything. I mean, and, and again, it's a good football team. And I know Austin Allen talks about it a little bit later. You know, close is that word that we keep saying, but they are just so close. And it is when is it going to go right and, you know, be on the other side of it? But I, I do got to say, I mean, again, um, you know, after the game, talking with players and then today, feeling the vibes, it is still a team that is a, approaching it the right way. They're not caught up on it. They're they're trying to close the, the chapter and move forward because, again, there's still, you know, things that are very much goals in reach and right there in hand and grasp. And they still – you know, can win a lot more football games the rest of the season. So I think they're they're continuing to approach things the right way. And um, as much as I was sad and heartbroken, I feel like they've moved on and have been able to handle it better than probably us as fans and people that cover this team. It's just, it's such a great group of guys. And you just, you know, guys like that, you saw all the photos. I was standing there waiting to do a couple of post-game interviews and Ben Stilley had ice on his knees, and there was a, a young fan that was like, Ben, Ben, you know, like hollering at him. And he walked all the way back to go talk to him. We saw how many players were spending time. Adrian, um, you know, Austin Allen, there were photos that, you know, even still took the time to spend some time with some fans after the game because it was really special for them to have that kind of atmosphere too. You use the word sad. I, that's that's fun. I, I was hurt. I, I, yeah. I, I felt hurt because I knew how much the team – and the staff had put into that. And I want for them for to feel some rewards. I want them to, to because they put so much into this, and they are getting better. And for them to not walk away from one of these tightly contested games with a win, it just it doesn't seem right that it's not happening. And I know it's not your right to win. You have to earn it. But doggone it, I really think we're doing so many things well that I think this team has earned some some good kickback at some point in time this year. Absolutely. And that's what I'm saying. Like it is just such a group of, of players that have have done the done the right things. And it is they they should be rewarded for that. You know, got teams and, and players that do everything right should be rewarded for that. And I think it's coming. And I guarantee you, there's a lot of teams left on the schedule. Iowa doesn't want to play Nebraska. And Ohio State, I guarantee you, they don't want to play Nebraska. I mean, the way that they're playing, the way that they've looked against some of these teams, there's 17 unbeaten teams, and Nebraska has played, what, four of them, three of them, and very, very close by one score, and all three of them could have gone the other way. And so I think there's... You know, we've seen it a lot on social media, people talking about this is the best four-loss team in the country. This is definitely not, does not look when you watch them play to be a four-loss team. And so it is a matter of time. You just, we just got to stick with them. And that's what you're hearing the message say from the players. Coaches, stick with them. It is coming. It is, it is literally coming. And, and Husker Nation will. They'll, they'll yes, stick with yep. this football program. They live and die with the Huskers on what they do on those Saturdays in the fall. And I know that they'll, they'll be here. They'll be here when we come back home in a couple of weeks to play Purdue because, you know, this week's a road game and then a much-deserved bye next week. So you won't see them back in Memorial Stadium until Halloween weekend. And, by the way, there are still tickets available for that Purdue game. So if you're on the fence and you haven't seen the Huskers play all year in person, there's a great chance to come to Lincoln and watch them play Purdue here in a couple of weeks. You know, I, I, I look... I said we 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 laid it out. I think we laid it out perfectly all last week. We talked all week about how good Michigan's front seven was, and I think everybody saw that Saturday night. They're really good. There's pros all over the field out there for them defensively, and they shut Nebraska out in the first half. And and then yet you look up at the end of the game, and Nebraska has 29 points on the board. So what a job by by this coaching staff to make some tweaks and some adjustments in that second half to find some ways to get points on the board and. and I think we all should be proud of that. And we, we hear people ask all the time, where are the adjustments coming? We, they were there Saturday night because you get shut out one half, you go put four touchdowns in there against that defense in the second half. means you did an awful lot of things well. 
It certainly was disappointing to have the turnover late and then turn the ball over on downs at midfield. Those were disappointing. And, and the team will tell you they've got they had it in their hands. They was they had the ball late with a chance to either go tie or win it, and they didn't get it done. Uh, but there were still a lot of really good things that happened in that game the other night uh, for for this team to to kind of build off of. I I worry, Jessica, can they keep getting off the deck? They have to this point in time in the year, but only so many times you can do that. But as you said today, what we heard from them. Sounds like they bounced back pretty well today at practice. Yeah, it seemed like they had a really great great um, day at practice because, again, I think it, it's still so different. And, you, and you'll hear Austin Allen talk about it. Like, the vibes are different this year. The, the way that this team loves playing together. And they're still making strides. I mean, you talked about it. They put 29 points on Michigan, by far the most points that Michigan had given up all year, and they did it in one half. You know, so uh, the way that they were able to respond, and we heard Coach Frost say, I think it was after the game, hey, we probably scored a little bit too fast, didn't give our defense a little bit, long, you know, time to rest there. Um, but but they're continuing to get better, and you saw some things come together for the offense against Northwestern, and every single offensive player that I talked to since the you know that game against Michigan. Felt like they had, you know, built off of that. And that was the big thing. You can't, you know, just stop with what you did against Northwestern. you got to continue to get better. And, and they did in the second half. Um, they continued to kind of put some things together. And that's with, again, another shuffle on the offensive line. So I, I think they're still continuing to put some things together and, and feel like even though, again, and you have to find a way to win these games, and, and they'll, they'll be the first to tell you that, but they're still getting better, and they're still improving each and every week. And that's kind of, I think, is what's keeping the positivity, the psyche, and the confidence up. It, this is still a very confident football team. I'm glad you mentioned the offensive line. Coach Frost did say today, Teddy Prohaska is done for the year. Knee surgery scheduled for later this week, so the true freshman's year is over. He was asked about could he get that year back. He doesn't know. They'll, they'll probably file the paperwork. The problem is he's played in five games. There is that four-game, you can save your redshirt rule. He's played in five now, so he's past that kind of point of no return. That's what stinks because Nebraska just made the decision a couple weeks ago to go with him and burn that redshirt, and then right after you do that, he gets hurt. How but, about when he comes off the field, he's pumping up the crowd? As he's He limped off. I know. I love that. And that, I, I asked Jeremiah about that when I went down there to help him shoot his uh, halftime interview. And he was like, gosh, love that. And you can tell how much Teddy loves playing for the yeah. Huskers. And he's he's going to have a right attitude about it. We talked about this with Gabe Irvin and about how he's going to handle his business the right way. Teddy's going to be the same way. He's going to go about his business the right way. And he's going to come back, I believe, stronger for it. And he just getting that little bit of a taste of how, you know, playing at this level. And because he has played in every game, so he's got a feel for it. You, you know, you go and you take care of your business and, and um, you know, the rehab and coming back, and he'll be he'll come back even stronger. What's really interesting about what you just said there, Gabe Irvin, Teddy Prohaska, two true freshmen. Yeah. And what impact they had in the time that they were out there before they both got hurt. But that shows you that there's some really good players, young, young players yeah. in this program. On our text line, Dale and Hastings said, proud of how we competed in spite of the loss. We're a way better team than the last couple of years. They've gotten rid of most of their miscues. So now just need to learn how to finish off games. Um, I'm dismayed at how inconsistent the calls with the refs continues. It's on both sides of the football. Uh, and both for both teams, however, it does seem that when there's a 50-50 call, we don't get as many breaks as our opponent, especially on important plays. Dale, I think your sentiment is shared by a lot of people. Yeah, it's it's a, being said a lot in the chat room tonight. And, and I understand that, but you know, th those are the things that a lot of teams that don't win point to. And so I, you know, I think I'm. I think there were, like I said earlier, Nebraska had the ball in their hands twice with a chance to go win the game. Turned it over one time, and I know some people are going to say, well, he was forward progress was stopped, and that's certainly a fair point and debatable one. But then the second time, Nebraska turned it over on downs at the 50-yard line. Well, I mean, and, and again, you, I totally understand the call, but at the beginning of the game, you know, you don't put points on the board on your first drive either. You know, like you can point to a lot of different Absolutely. things. Yep. And as much as it is disappointing, and I think, you know, a lot of fans get frustrated with that because it does seem to be that a lot of the and, – and a lot of this is because it is such a tight game that we hear it so many times, one play here or there, and, um, you know, the – 
as Coach Frost said in his post game, we're one play away, and a lot of fans and you know people from the outside want to point to that one play being one call by the officiating crew. But I think the team understands absolutely that you know they're they're they want to be in control of their own destiny. They don't want to leave it up to the officials to make that call for it to be in the officials' hands. So you know you you've got to go make that one play yourselves. To, to make that thing come out right. And, and I thought, I hope folks got a chance to hear his post-game press conference, and, and he kept getting grilled by reporters trying to get him to talk about officiating, and he wouldn't go there. And I, I, thought, I thought he was magnificent, Coach Frost I'm talking about, in his post-game remarks Saturday night, because that thing hurt. And you saw players leaving the locker room. There was hurt in the eyes of some of those guys. They laid it out there Saturday night and came up just so short. Yeah, they, they just battled and they fought. And Michigan is a good football they team. Are. I didn't, you know, I wasn't necessarily, I didn't know how, to, how I felt about Michigan at the beginning of the season. But, I mean, that's a good football team. And, you know, Jeremiah came up to the press conference today and he was talking about they've got some talent. they got some legit talent, some talent that's going to be playing on Sundays. And the way Nebraska matched up with them, but you know they did they did everything but one play. They're one play away from winning that game. They're one play away, you know, from winning Michigan State. And and yes, it is absolutely frustrating. I understand. You know, again, a lot of people saying that in the chat about the officiating and that kind of being the reason why Nebraska doesn't win. But the players are not for a second, and the coaching staff are not for a second saying that it's on the officiating. They know that they have right. got to do it themselves. They've got to go get that play themselves. Absolutely. I, I said earlier that the mission was better than I thought, and when I was saying that, I knew the defense was really good. What I didn't know was could their quarterback, who had not been asked to make plays to give them wins, could he make plays? And he did. The kid did. I mean, he threw the one pick, but he made a lot of really good throws. And he got them in good situations throughout the night. So you tip your cap. You're going, kid hadn't proved it. He kind of did Saturday night. So that's uh, uh, good for them. And we'll follow what Michigan does from this point in time on through the year. Did have a question about the joint possession on the fumble. Never heard of it. Okay. Never heard of that. I mean, you know, you, you see it sometimes when there's a pass thrown and a receiver and a DB both grab it. In that case, it goes to the offensive player. And I think that's what they ruled here. Uh, but, yeah, on a punt, I've never seen that happen. Usually you wait, you see who's got more hands on the ball, and that's the team that gets the football. That and the whatever the other thing was, discernible altering, the, the, where they accused Nebraska of clapping, hadn't seen that either. In fact, the funny thing about that is last year we played in Iowa, and Nebraska was talking about Iowa doing some of that to Nebraska's offense with clapping, and Nebraska got made fun of by Iowa's coaching staff, Iowa's media, the Big Ten conferences, there's no such thing. And Saturday night, Nebraska gets called for the very thing that they were kind of complaining about. Well, Iowa and it year. wasn't the one on Luke Reimer. He was trying to get somebody's attention. Exactly. It wasn't like was he doing. was trying to distract any of the, the he was clap trying to get cadence. A he was, was trying to get, because it was so loud, he was trying to get you know, attention to, to pass along the play call. It was not by any means. He was literally looking at, but I mean, again, if that's a rule, that's a rule. Right. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's so. one you just never really see get called, or I have not seen it get called. Hey, this season, share Valentino's tailgater tradition with our big red double jumbo deal and get two one-topping jumbo pizzas for only seventeen seventy-nine each. Order yours online at valentinos.com. Valentinos, it's the official pizza of the Huskers. Go Big Red. All right, phone line's open. What do you think? 402-413-2400. Call or text. We're back with more of the show. We'll even try to work in some clips from the head coach from his press conference earlier today. That's coming up next. A DUI is everything you didn't prepare for. You did not save for it. You did not train for it. You did not go to school for it. You did not raise your family or buy a house or get a job for it. It is not your life goal or a dream come true. You have planned for everything in your life. You did not plan for a DUI. Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Today's play of the day comes from Nebraska. We pick it up with the local sports announcer at a Nebraska lottery retailer. Dave enters the store. He makes a move to the checkout counter. Looks like he's going to pass. Yes, he's passing the clerk a few dollars. The clerk takes the handoff and spins around. It looks like he's placed the scratch tickets on the counter. And now Dave has them in his hand. It's the old scratch Aruski. He scratches left. He scratches right. Oh, my. He's done it. Dave has scored a bundle of cash. 
Play is good. Go play. Odds vary by game. At Subaru, they love building vehicles for those who pack a lot into life. The redesigned 2021 Crosstrek is their way of saying more power to you. An upgrade in horsepower means you have a world of fun and adventure waiting for you. And the Crosstrek comes with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. Love, it's what makes Subaru, Subaru. Visit Deteau Subaru at 27th Street and Jamie Lane in Lincoln or at DeteauSubaru.com. Upgraded horsepower available on select models. Triple B Feed has the products to help your cows thrive. Whether it's weekly delivery of consumption-controlled Lumix liquid minerals with protein or Redmond natural mineral salt for livestock or humans, Triple B has you covered. Let Brian and Brad Blahorn take some of the stress out of your beef production this year. For more information and other products, visit TripleBeefeed.com. Triple B Feed, helping you and your cattle. Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic for better health. Why chiropractic? Because it is safe, drug-free, and a cost-effective treatment option for back and joint pain. Plus, all generations can benefit from natural chiropractic care. Choose chiropractic first for pain pain relief, nutrition, or to improve your mobility, athletic performance, or overall wellness. Make chiropractic your first choice for better health. Find a chiropractic physician near you at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. Lutz is an integrated business solutions firm born and raised in Nebraska with offices in Omaha, Lincoln, Hastings, and Grand Island. Lutz provides expert accounting, consulting, financial, technology, M&A, and talent solutions tailored to you. Lutz embraces your business as their own to discover the right solutions to help you thrive. They mind what matters for businesses or individuals seeking a partner to help energize and heighten financial and organizational success. Visit Lutz.us slash GBR. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. You trained for this all year. Endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. And now, you are ready. Ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance. All without spilling a drop of your ice-cold Bud Light. Welcome back to football, sports fans. Don't let the cold winter worry you. As Nebraska's leading supplier of propane, you can count on Sap Brothers to keep your family warm this winter. You're like family, and your safety is the number one priority of Sap Brothers. When it comes to your propane needs, Sap Brothers has you covered. Visit www.sapbros.net slash petroleum to find your local Sap Brothers propane expert. Celebrating 50 years of fueling America's heartland and welcoming guests, Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Husker Athletics. Here we go again, the celebrating, the accolades. Ever since we added Marco to our team, our technology can't lose. Day after day, success after success, Marco's made our business IT a force to be reckoned with. The only drawback of being technology all-stars is keeping champagne away from the electronics. <sighs> Find out what your technology could be saying at marconet.com. Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addie's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addie's. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. Score a game-winning drive when you buy your next vehicle at Sid Dillon Chevrolet. As a Chevrolet Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles, including medium-duty trucks and low-cap forwards. Whatever vehicle fits your needs, we're here to make the purchase process easy. Visit our Chevy locations in Blair, Crete, Fremont, or Wahoo. Plus, shop our full inventory at SidDillonChevy.com. You are what drives us, Sid Dillon. Chevy, find new roads. Hey Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare, 
Advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team. www.iowaworks.gov. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network broadcast studio, sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer. 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas Acres Solutions for every field. 402-413-2400, the number to dial us up with a comment or question or fire off a text if you have some thoughts about um, the game Saturday night and where this the direction of this program is headed forward. Uh, Rob and Hastings on our text line said, Jim Harbaugh is whining about five guys in the backfield. Whiteouts always ask if they're on the line. The side judge or linesman would be complicit if it were a legal illegal formation. Isn't that correct? Well, Rob, it was an illegal formation. Nebraska got away with one there. Uh, we pointed that out on the broadcast. Austin Allen today up in front of the media said the same thing. He, he knew that Nebraska got away with one. So Jim Harbaugh was correct in that. The funny thing is, though, Michigan had an instance of that later in the game where they had five lined up in the backfield, and they did not get called for it. The difference would be Nebraska did score on that that possession. So what did you think? I want your thoughts, Jessica, because I had some buddies over the weekend. Huskers first drive of the game, they get it down inside the five, and Scott goes for it late instead of kicking the field goal. What did you think? I, I'm all for it. I don't, I don't mind that at all because you have all the confidence in the world in the black shirts. They had just, what, they forced a three and out to start the, start the game. They did. You yep. have every belief that they're not going to let Michigan put up a bunch of points, and they didn't. They didn't put up a bunch of points really in that first half. And so Nothing um, in the first quarter. Yeah, and then, you know, the, right there it was – pretty much shut them down. They had six points until the very end of the second quarter. So I, I have no problem with it. And we heard Jay talking about it on Big Red Reaction. I mean, this place would have just gone absolutely nuts had they gone for it and, and got a touchdown. I don't, I don't mind that at all because you, you have full belief that your defense is going to shut Michigan down and might as well go for it. And, um, yeah, I, I have no problem with that I at think all. his team was very happy he did. Yeah, the they wanted the to go for right, it. They, did. they wanted yep. to go for it. Yeah. Let's take some calls. Let's uh, head to Valentine first. And Chris, good evening. Chris, welcome to Sports Nightly. Hey, how are y'all doing tonight? Good, I just uh, wanted to let you know that I uh, I went out of the game with my son. Oh, my God, we had a fantastic time. Uh, There is no place like Nebraska for nice football. Uh, But I want to talk specifically about Coach Frost and sort of the transformation or maybe evolution that he's had through his press conferences this year. You know, um, for the past few weeks, honestly, it's been kind of painful to watch. I mean, I've heard for him. He looked like he wanted to be anywhere except in front of those cameras. But that seems to have changed since Saturday night. He seems, I I know he didn't get the win, but it seems as though a weight has been lifted off of his shoulders. I mean, he smiled today. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he smiled today. (laughs) I just want to know what your thoughts are on on, uh, Coach Frost and his two most recent press conferences. And thanks for listening to me. All right, Chris. Appreciate it. Yeah, you you said it how well he's handled, and I, I think he really really likes his team, and I think they've really been doing as we talked about kind of in the first segment. They've been doing everything right, and he hurts for them, and he wants them to win, but they're such a joy to be around. And I mean, you can see, you know, just a little bit that I get to be around him. I love being around this football team. It is a fun group of guys they do everything right and so I think he really enjoys coaching this team and they've played well they're just you know again one play away from beating you know three of the top ranked teams and or three of the top 10 ranked teams yeah. they're one play away in three games that against three teams that are ranked in the top 10 and unbeaten and so you know I think he's he's having fun coaching this and I think even though they've lost, things are starting to come together for this team. They're starting to click. And on all three phases, you know, you had a couple games where the defense was playing well. The offense really couldn't get it going. You had a couple games where the offense kind of got it going and the defense is playing well. And the last couple games, for the most part, all three phases were cl- clicking pretty good. And so I think he, he is seeing that, and that's a, a joy for him. Chris, I also think he's getting help from his boss. I, I really think... You are seeing the effects of Trev Alberts. I think Scott mentioned today that they meet a couple of times a week. They always meet on Sundays. And, and I think he's getting a little coaching from Trev Alberts. I think, I, I don't think, I, I don't think there's any doubt that he is. And 
I don't, you know, I, I love Bill Moose too, but I don't think Bill was ever really around Scott, where I think Trev is, and Trev's probably giving him some pointers to help him make his way through these really difficult press gatherings. And Trev, obviously, as we've seen, is an absolute pro, is really good at doing media stuff. That's what he did before he got into being an, an AD. And so, you know, he's he's really good at it. And, and um, people have said that if he didn't change his profession, he could have been probably one of the top analysts, if not the top analyst, wherever he wanted to be on television. And I think that shows. And so, yeah, I mean, It'd be, uh, he, he needs to give us some pointers, you know? Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. we, he needs to have a media training class for all of us. Let's uh, head out to Gothenburg. Cody, you're up next on Sports Alley. Hey, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with the Oscars. I've seen the growth. Um, I'm not disappointed with the game. I wish we were one, absolutely. Uh, my comment was the fumble on Martinez. Um, I kind of see both sides of it. Should he have gone down? Absolutely. Um, but at the same time, it seemed like his uh, forward progress was held. And should, I don't know, in my opinion, um, he should have been down, play should have been called dead. And I don't know, I guess depending on who's playing, sometimes that uh, forward progress is blown dead sooner than others. That's exactly it, Cody. I think you nailed it right there. Uh, as I watched it, Adrian's legs were still churning when he fumbled. Uh, I also thought the whistle probably should have been blown. But I also, if I, were, if I were Michigan, I would want that call. If that was a Michigan quarterback that was still pumping his legs and the ball popped out, I would want that to be a fumble. So I don't have much of a problem, honestly, with the Martinez fumble there late in the game. There were a lot of other calls in the game that I do. That one I just I don't have that big of a beef with. Yeah, and I think Adrian kind of addressed it today. He said, you know, he's got to be better in those situations. He'll learn from it. And even though he thought it was it was forward progress and that the play was over, he, he can't take that chance. And so, you know, he, he talked about that, and he'll learn from it. And, and um, But, yeah, I mean, it's a, that was – it was a tough one, I think, in the moment. Obviously, a lot of people thought it should have gone one way, but I think when you go back and watch the film, you see why it was called that way. I do. Yeah, buckle up, put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Let's go to Sioux City and Scott. Good evening, Scott. Welcome to Sports Highly. Hey, good evening. Thanks for taking my call. Boy, what a, what a game again. Um, in the moment, it's hard to take after... After the uh, adrenaline settles down and uh, get a day to sleep on it, um, I don't know. I feel a lot better about that game. Uh, two of the plays that the referees really got us on was one when they trapped that interception against the ground. That was clear. And then the pass uh, interference down the goal line, was that was ridiculous, too. Um, yeah, I, I love what, what Scott said about, about that. Um, you know, um, that stuff's going to happen. And uh, as far as Jim Harbaugh goes, um, I'm glad that Michigan's got him and not us. Um, <laughs> when when it comes you know, to the end of the game and and any, he's the total opposite of humility. And I, I'm sure he's a good guy and everything, but um, he he could probably learn how to act a little bit differently. Uh, but that's on him. As far as I'm concerned, they the rest has won those games. Anyway, thanks for taking my call. Scott, appreciate it. Thank you for the phone call. Yeah, I mean, it seems to be that's the big, the, the P.I. call on JoJo yeah. is definitely the one. And I know Scott even addressed it in his interview with Jeremiah at the half that that was a really big right. call that goes against you. Um, you know, and and – we we've kind of talked a lot about it. It's it's just it's the big topic of the day. Uh, but you just cannot put yourself, you know, in those types of situations where you're you're. Now, what I will say is that they totally incorrectly placed the ball at the three. It's it's one of two things. It's either a full 15 yard penalty, and it, there weren't 15 yards. There we had the football at the 16, so they can't give you the full 15 or the spot of the foul. And that's what they deem. They go, we're going to put it at the spot of the foul. Well, the contact happened in between the five and the six-yard line, not the three. Right. So they marked it at the three. They, that is 
That is totally incorrect on their part. You can't debate that at all. That They got that wrong. Now, what the officials saw was they thought JoJo running up the back of the receiver who had stopped. The biggest complaint I think I would have if I'm Scott Frost is, well, that's a totally uncatchable ball. That, that's the quarterback's what I said. throwing the ball away. Yeah, it was, there was not even a receiver in the vicinity, and the guy had right. stopped running. That's what I didn't understand. I was asking, I'm like, how, how can you call that right. when there wasn't even a receiver over there? Correct. That's where I was just kind of confused on when do they, so I know that the Big Ten league office puts out statements and kind of corrects some of the things or makes statements on, they always go back, look, I have a brother that refs Division One basketball and they go back and they review mm -hmm. all of these games and they talk about hey this was wrong this is call was wrong they they watch the film and they address it they send out you know all of the information on you you guys gotta you know look at this call this wasn't right blah 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 you you, you go through it just like you do as a, right. a coach and player you watch the game film when do they put out you know some of that that statement that information of hey this, because we saw it, what was it, the forward? It was the lateral that yeah. Logan's mother's head that took the touchdown off the board. So they ended there. up coming out yeah. with that. I think it was like Thursday of that week. Right. So yeah. we might see some of that information come out later this week. The league office putting out, hey, yo, we went back, we watched it. This was not the right call. Referees are human. There's going to be mistakes. There's going to be wrong calls in literally every single game. No doubt. One more caller before we go to our next break. Let's go to Hawaii, to the islands. David, you're up next. Hey, aloha, folks. Go Big Red. Aloha. Hey, I just, aloha. Hey, I just wanted to talk about how great Nebraska has been this year. As far as, like, they talked earlier, like, from 2018 to now, totally different team. True, true, just physical. It's awesome to see that on Saturday. Also, you know, when, um, when Adrian had that ball stripped at the end, I just, it, like you said, it was just sad. But then I was like, man, I just wish it happened to somebody else. Like, just take some light off of Adrian. But I don't think there's anybody that can handle it better than Adrian, the the, uh, the, the accidents that happened during the game. Like, I watched Spencer Rattler throw an interception in an Oklahoma game, and he just belittled his teammates for turning the wrong way and just didn't act unprofessional. And I just pass off to Adrian Martinez for being a true warrior about that. You know, so that's all I really got to say. Go be red. David, thank you very much. Adrian has the total respect of his teammates. He oh, does. yeah. I love the fact that, you know, again, when I first got here, there was uh, some animosity towards him, some questions and some doubt about him, but I think he's changed a lot of the minds of a lot of people, the way that he's handled everything this season, the way that he's bounced back. And, you know, this whole team just adores Adrian Martinez. Um, they want to play for him. They want to fight for him. And it's not just the offense, it's the defense. And, and we see quarterbacks across the country that teams quit on them. And this team is not going to quit on Adrian Martinez. David and all of our callers are dialing us up tonight on our Sports Nightly Hotline, brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations, simplified car buying to save you time. Shop finance and buy online at woodhouse.com. Phone lines are open, 402-413-2400. More of the show coming up next. From the field to game day tailgates, make the most of the season with a truck from Woodhouse. Our team is ready to help you get the job done with a full lineup of our new or new-to-you trucks from Ford, Chevy, Ram, GMC and Nissan. Plus, shop, finance, and buy your way online at woodhouse.com or one of our 17 dealerships. So get a win this season with a truck from Woodhouse, the official auto dealer of Nebraska Athletics. Valley 365 is here, and the time is now to take your farming technology full circle. Valley 365 is the ultimate command center, the new single sign-on platform that brings together our tried and true technology and streamlines your entire operation. Combining the best features of AgSense, Valley Scheduling, Valley VRI, and Valley Insights, Valley 365 is the next level solution for connected crop management. Leverage your data, make the most of your time, and own your tomorrow. Contact your Valley dealer today. There is no place like Nebraska, and there's no place that treats you like home, like Sap Brothers. For 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and been a reliable partner to local farms and Husker fans across Nebraska. 
providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane, servicing your farming equipment and welcoming guests into their travel centers. Visit www.sapbros.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Husker Athletics. Whether you compete on the court, at the track, on the field, or in the field, winning isn't just a goal. It's a mindset shaped, honed, and defined throughout the season. That's why farmers pushing themselves to be the best plant DeKalb brand corn. Wherever you compete, winning has roots. Perform at your best with DeKalb. Always read and follow grain marketing and all other stewardship practices and pesticide label directions. While some seed companies put a greater stake in stock prices and anonymous shareholders, Rob Seco knows that what's important to you it's closer to home. That's why you'll find we're focused on your needs. With a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, a relationship that makes it easy to connect with anyone in the company, and the technology, traits, and genetics you need from any source. Put your stock in the company that puts you first. Rob Seco. Momentum. It's building at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. With game-changing work in precision agriculture, nanoscience and digital humanities we're unlocking mysteries in brain research solving the impossible with remote surgery using robots and we're creating bold futures with world-leading research in early childhood education we don't slow down and we're not letting up we are nebraska Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. From sprains and stitches to sore throats and sinus infections. When it's care that can't wait, count on CHI Health Clinic Priority Care. Simply walk in seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You'll get the quality care you need without an appointment and you'll never pay more than a regular primary care visit. Get in, get out, and get on with your day. Find a location near you at chihealth.com slash priority care. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. Experience the Woodhouse Lincoln difference today. We make it easy to find the right vehicle for you. Like the 2021 Lincoln Nautilus. Find comfort in the extreme with revitalizing interior features and a sculpted exterior design. Lincoln keeps you safe on your journey with Lincoln Copilot 360. A suite of safety features that come standard. Elevate your driving and shopping experience with Woodhouse Lincoln by visiting us at Woodhouse Place or online woodhouselincoln.net. Walk these fields for 85 years. Grow deeper roots here. Know what thrives here. Bring in world-class genetics and innovative traits like chrome triple stack corn hybrids and Enlist E3 soybeans. Refine it through pure local know-how and expertise. Do all of that and the only thing left is the right seed. Hogemeyer. Learn more at therightseed.com. Here is a before winter to-do list from JTEC Construction. Let's start with windows. Triple pane window technology has saved homeowners countless dollars on heating and cooling bills. Siding serves a crucially important purpose, protecting your home and insulating it from adverse weather conditions. And don't forget about your roof. Designing your roof should be simple and painless, and JTEC offers several payment plan options. One more thing on your to-do list called JTEC Construction, the official exterior experts of the Huskers. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy Sports Bar and Grill, see you there for the game. 
Visit a participating Agco dealer between now and November 12th. Get yourself entered for a chance to win a pair of tickets to the Nebraska Iowa. Iowa football game on Black Friday. That's going to include some pregame tailgate passes. See participating Agco locations across Nebraska. You could be a winner this season. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a sports nightly Monday night. Carla, our good friend Carla, on a text line said, the non-call that stood out to me was why did they score a review or not see that the Michigan's player's knee was down? Why did it take our coaching staff to point that out? That's a fair point because the booth reviewed it. And I think they were clearly looking, did he clear the goal line? They didn't even think about that the quarterback's knee went down. Yeah, you heard Coach Frost saying after the game, you know, gave major Ryan props Held. to Ryan Held, who saw it. And, you know, I think a lot of people were like, well, no, he's in, he's in. But Husker Vision, boy, they had that. They zoomed in and they circled the knee and the crowd starts going nuts. And I think that's when everybody started seeing, oh, okay, that's what's going uh -huh. on. But, you know, that's, that's you know, huge props. to We heard Coach uh, Cook saying so many times about the video review in Devaney, how important that is. And, you know, shout out to Husker Vision. And I think it was Emily, I believe. I need to, I need to get the name of the of the girl that had that that had and that view it. that zoom, zoomed into it and yep. circled it. So that was big. Huge. Jim and Columbus, all Nebraska fans should be proud of the way the football team is playing their hearts out. I can see why it's only the beginning of great things coming. Go Big Red. There you go. Perfect, Jim. Well put. Let's take, talk to another Jim. Jim in North Platte, you're up next on Sports Nightly. Yes, I would like to say thank you for my call. And I would just like to... I would just like to bring up if the boys was able to finish the ball game, and I know over the last 15 years we have lost a lot of close ball games in the last two minutes. If our boys would be able to finish, we would have an awesome offense and we would have an awesome defense. Thank you for taking my call. All right, Jim. You're right. I uh, appreciate your thought on this. Back to our text line, Stephen Woodcliffe Lake. Need Adrian to come out early and say he's coming back next year. That will be interesting. I think a lot of dominoes will fall if he decides to come back. I think he makes his decision maybe not before the season ends, but maybe in December. Don't yeah. you think that's yeah. when he'll make Yeah, I would think right call. after. I think he's going to stay focused on one game at a time I, and, 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 and get this season done, and then it'll he'll say probably once they play that last game. And maybe, I'm saying it right now, going into the bowl game, he'll have his decision made. There you go. I like the way you're thinking. Nebraska 1-1 says, go dig red. Before you dig, always call or click 811 to have your utility line's marked. It's free, it's easy, and it's the law. Back with our final segment of this hour, next. Touchdown, Nebraska! If you're doing business in Nebraska, the best way to connect your organization with the excitement surrounding the Huskers is through a partnership with Nebraska Athletics. You can take your business to the next level by reaching loyal Husker fans through in-venue signage, digital and social media, radio advertising, and more. Got it! Join the Husker team today and email partners at huskers.com to learn more about opportunities to connect with Husker Nation. That's partners at huskers.com. Walk these fields for 85 years. Grow deeper roots here. Know what thrives here. Bring in world-class genetics and innovative traits like chrome triple stack corn hybrids and enlist E3 soybeans. Refine it through pure local know-how and expertise. Do all of that, and the only thing left is the right seed. Hogemeyer. Learn more at therightseed.com. From vintage sneakers to bacon-scented soap to water fountains for your pet, all can be had with a few simple clicks. Problem is, you never really know what you're going to get until they show up at your door. Introducing Ford Blue Advantage. It's used car buying that's built for you. Not only can you shop for used vehicles online, in person, or both, you can also test drive before you buy, so you know exactly what you're getting. Plus, get history reports, vehicle inspections, Ford warranties, and the expertise of factory-trained techs. Visit FordBlueAdvantage.com today. Valley 365 is here, and the time is now to take your farming technology full circle. Valley 365 is the ultimate command center, the new single sign-on platform that brings together our tried and true technology and streamlines your entire operation. Combining the best features of AgSense, Valley Scheduling, Valley VRI, and Valley Insights, Valley 365 is the next level solution for connected crop management. Leverage your data, make the most of your time, and own your tomorrow. Contact your Valley dealer today. 
Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. It's game on at Sid Dillon Buick GMC Cadillac in Fremont. Featuring our winning combination of Buick SUVs and GMC trucks and SUVs. And as a GMC business elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles for your business needs. For the convenient and easy way to shop for your next vehicle, just visit our Fremont location. Or check out our full inventory at SidDillonBuickGMC.com. You are what drives us. Dylan. We are professional grade. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas Acres Solutions for every field. Time now to see what's on tap, presented by Bud Light. Husker Volleyball back in action on Wednesday night at the Devaney Center. They'll entertain Indiana. Pre-game coverage here on the network begins at 7.30. Husker football in Minneapolis, 11 a.m. kick in uh, the Twin City, we'll be on the air at 7 a.m. with Husker Game Day. That is what is on tap, presented by Bud Light. 402-413-2400. Let's go to Springfield and Homer. Good evening, Homer. You're up on Sports Nightly. Hey, I just want to know um, what is, I mean, our defense is amazing. Top 10 defense in the nation, I think. Um, but over a four-year period, what is Adrian Martinez's win-loss record? Yeah, it's not very good. I mean, it's like what one? I think he wins one every three, one out of every three games, or something like that. So, if he's going to win one out of three games over a four-year period, it stands to reason that he's going to win one out of four games, or you know, one out of three games this year and next year if he comes back. I think that's something that uh, you know might be a great guy, great athlete, fantastic athlete, but he's just not getting it done. He doesn't have the hit factor. No, and, and, you know, I, I hear that. Appreciate the phone call, Homer. I, you know, you hear that a lot from people. All I can say is he's the best one we have on the team. He's the best quarterback. He's the best player for that position that we have on this football team. Yeah, and there's a lot of teams across the country that would love to have Adrian Martinez as their quarterback right now. I mean, just, the, again, the weapon that he has with his feet. I understand, you know, you have to look at overall what his resume has done since he's he's gotten here, but I also think he's a different quarterback this year than he was a year ago. I think he's a different quarterback this year than he was as a sophomore, and, and he has more weapons around him, and we're continuing to see those guys come along, and I don't – he's going to have a lot of people People coming back next year and so I, I kind of think it's unfair to say oh well next year he's going to be one for three or one win one game every three or, or whatever I mean I think we've seen the growth this year um, but he'll be the first to tell you yeah absolutely he's got to get it done when when the you know time calls he can't fumble like he did the other night he's he said it he sure. can't he can't make those mistakes yeah and, you know again quarterbacks get too much praise and they get too much blame when things don't go well obviously it's the most important position on the field we get that uh, but again in, in nebraska's brought in other quarterbacks nobody's been able to beat him out and so he's been the guy and so right now he's the huskers guy so for husker nation he's your guy as long as he wants to be here and, and he's last, his team's guy right in the last segment we had all these people texting sure hoping adrian would announce he's coming back right now for next year. I need to quickly tell you to buckle up, put that phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Boy, that went fast. Come on back. Another hour to go. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. You could win a 2021 Ford F-150 XL four-wheel drive Super Crew truck from the Woodhouse Auto family this season. If the Huskers return the first or second half opening kick for a touchdown, Woodhouse will give away an F-150. New contestants will be chosen each week. For details on how to enter the Woodhouse Auto Family Kickoff Contest and official rules, go to woodhousekickoff.com. That's woodhousekickoff.com. 
Freddy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addie's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and a new flagship capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addie's. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare, advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team. www.iowaworks.gov. <sighs> Sometimes being an office printer feels like I'm competing in an Olympic sport. Thankfully, I have Marco's Managed Print Services on my team. Marco's game plan helps me make big plays while saving big bucks. And Marco's lightning fast tech support gets me back in the game fast. <sighs> I'm up. Find out what your printers could be saying with Marco's Managed Print Services at Marconet.com.
And welcome inside the Acres Broadcast Center. I'm Tim Mulhaupt, and this is your Sports Nightly Ticker. Scott Frost met with the media this morning and addressed a number of topics, including how strong a schedule the Big Ten Conference provides for his team. Uh, I think the Big Ten's really good. I've said this a lot. It, top to bottom, it's good. Anybody can beat you any week. Um, on top of that, we play the... You know, might as well just schedule a scrimmage with Penn State on a Wednesday. We're going to play everybody that's good in the league every year. Um, we knew that the schedule was going to be a challenge coming into the year, and the kids were excited about it. And, man, we've battled with these, these teams that are all good teams, and I think we're a good team. Um, we got to win our share. Huskers football hits the road again as they'll battle Minnesota this Saturday at 11 a.m. Central. Huskers volleyball is coming off a big weekend after beating Penn State and Rutgers, extending their winning streak to six straight matches. For their efforts, the Huskers have moved up to ninth in the latest ABCA poll and took home a bevy of Big Ten weekly awards. Junior outside hitter Matty Kubik was named Co-Big Ten Player of the Week after averaging 4.29 kills and three digs per set. Senior Nicklin Hames was named Big Ten Setter of the Week, averaging 11.29 assists and 2.86 digs, digs along with eight. 0.86 blocks per set. For the second time this season, Lexi Rodriguez took home the Big Ten Freshman of the Week award, pacing all players against Penn State with 19 digs. She then duplicated that beat with 17 more in the Huskers' win over the Scarlet Knights. Huskers baseball just wrapped up its first red-white scrimmage with red topping white 4-1. to Starter Cody Frank led the way for red with five shutout innings, allowing just two hits and striking out seven. And Luke Sartori drove in two on a three-for-four performance at the plate today. Over to the big leagues where the MLB postseason is in the midst of a nearly full slate of action today. The White Sox and Astros were rained out, unfortunately, earlier. Game four will be played tomorrow in Chicago at 1.07 p.m. Lance McCullers will duel Carlos Rodon as Houston looks to win and move on to the ALCS. The Braves took a 2-1 series lead in their NLDS this afternoon, blanking the Brewers 3-0. The Rays are currently trying to stave off elimination and even their series with the Red Sox. And so far, no score in Boston midway through the third. And that actually has just changed as Boston just drove in three runs in the bottom of the third inning. So Boston looking to move on there as well to the ALCS. Then out on the West Coast, the Dodgers and Giants do battle in LA with their series even at one. Alex Wood will take the mound for San Francisco, and Max Scherzer will be on the bump for the Dodgers. Week 5 of the NFL wraps up tonight as Lamar Jackson and the Ravens host Carson Wentz and the Colts on Monday Night Football. Kickoff coming up in just about 10 minutes' time. That's the ticker. I'm Tim Molhaupt, and this is Sports Nightly on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Ramirez in the backfield on second short. Fake the handoff, rolling the pocket back to throw. Adrian takes a shot downfield, has a man open. It's Ramirez, makes a catch. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Nebraska. Huskers burn that Wolverine defense for a second time in the third quarter. Now Penn State back right. Johnny Parker stopped. A huge block. Nebraska big block. Couldn't have been better time. Huskers lead. It's 2019 step two. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers radio network. We're back. Hour number two. Sports Island here on a Monday night. Hope you had a good weekend. It's tough to have good weekends, right? When the Huskers get their heart ripped out like they did on a Saturday night. But they live for another week. The Minnesota game coming up here in just Five days. Going to hear from Matt Davison here in just a couple of minutes. Austin Allen sat down with Jessica, and we'll try to work in some of the clips from today's press conference with the head coach, looking back at some of the things that the team dealt with Saturday, getting ready for the Gophers was some of the topics that he hit on here today. On our text line, Lee said, great show as usual. Some strange refereeing. JoJo's P.I. misplaced the ball on the play. Um, also, a misunderstanding by the refs that Adrian was just sneaking ahead for a first down. Whistle should have gone off a little quicker. And Harbaugh is a sore winner. Would much rather have Coach Frost by, for us than him. Huskers are getting there. Hang in there. Go Big Red. There you go. Yeah. I like I, that. I feel like there's there's quite a bit of positivity. Um, you know, again, just the way that it seems like it's coming together. And you can see it on the field. And 
the way the offense really got going and kind of they were clicking on all cylinders. They Michigan couldn't stop Nebraska in the second half. So the way that they adjusted at, at halftime, I think, is a big thing too. Those adjustments sometimes that we haven't seen, the way that they were able to tweak some of those things and kind of you know make those adjustments and really uh, buy into the adjustments and it, and it showed on the scoreboard. I saw some people questioning. Well, it seems like we try to run up the the middle way too much. Well, sometimes what you're doing in games. And Scott Frost mentioned this earlier today is you call plays early in the game to kind of see how they're going to defend you. And then you you learn from that as the game goes on and you go, okay, we can they're gonna line up and do this when we line up and do this, so we need to do that. And Scott Frost mentioned that. Yep, we learned a lot in the first half. That's why we had more success in the second half. Well, and I think you'll hear Austin Allen talking about it too. There were a lot of plays that they didn't, that they kind of held back a little bit, and Correct. then they realized that, like you said, could have can be successful in the second half. That they rolled out, and I think you know, again, Jeremiah and I talked a lot about this the last couple of weeks on on the Facebook live stream. Just the the full arsenal getting healthy, and you can do a lot of different things. We saw the play to bets last week against Northwestern. Uh, you know, you have the different running back. Look. Ramir did in the passing game you Great. know you just have it's hard to defend when you have so many different options and yeah you see what a defense is going to do okay this is what you're going to do then we're going to do this and you now have the personnel and the arsenal that you can kind of tweak things once you see what the defense is going to do yeah so that answered a couple of people that were in the, the chat room asking about that hope that helps sometimes you, we can sit there as fans and observers and go why do they keep doing that well they may be setting something up for later in the game and I think that was the case in a lot of ways on Saturday night. Well, Monday nights means it's time to sit down with a color analyst for the Cornhuskers, Matt Davison. It's Mondays with Matt. Here we are again following another heart-wrenching loss on Saturday. Another Husker game, another heartbreaking loss. This one was tough on Saturday night. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously disappointed. Didn't get the win, but, um, you know, it was such a great night, and you just, I felt at least like it was going to be our night. I really felt like we were going to win the football game. Had the lead a couple of times in the fourth quarter and thought we were going to finish it off and and uh, didn't get it done. Even at the end, after they took the lead with a minute to go and we're at midfield, I thought we were probably going to tie the game or win the game, and that didn't happen either. So, yeah, wildly disappointed uh, in the result, but, man, the kids played so hard and, and – um, you know, we have a good team. I think everybody knows that. It just uh, didn't work out Saturday night. But the fans brought it. Um, this stadium is electric. It's um, as good as there is in the country. And uh, we, we showed what a, a great product we can put out there and a great fan base. And the production of the whole thing uh, with the night game was incredible. So, um, you know, it was a great experience up until uh, right in the last couple minutes. Huskers now have dropped three of the last four, and yet you feel like that this team is getting better as the season is going along. Are you seeing signs of that happening? I think Coach Frost has talked about it. Players have talked about it. They've, they've gotten better every week. Obviously, the start to the season was terrible at, at Illinois, and you want that one back. But this team got better in week two and then in week three and week four. I think they've gotten better every week, and you see that with most teams. And... Um, you know, starting with a league game does make it harder, and a lot of teams are doing that now. It didn't used to be that way. And so you'd have kind of some non-conference games to get you going early in the season. And um, that's kind of changed in college football. But this team has gotten better and better in my mind, even through the losses. And that's not always easy. Uh, you want to see results. You want to see, uh, you want to experience success when you're putting a lot of hard work in. And it can get frustrating if you don't see the, the fruits of the labor. And yet this team, I think it's, it's because of the camaraderie they have, uh, the love they have for each other and the staff and, and the program. Um, just different feeling around the program. It's a, it's a great feeling. It's a, a calm confidence to the team. I think they believe they're going to win every game that they play. I don't know that that was always the case. And, um, you know, they every single Monday, good, win or lose, they've come back and, and had a great week and, and really grinded to, to get ready for the next Saturday. And I expect that will happen again this week. Coach announced today that Teddy Prohaska out for the year, knee injury. That's a shame for him. Then you had to rejumble the offensive line. And, and yet, you know, Michigan might have been better than I thought they were going to be going into the game. And, and this offense found a way to score on four out of five drives in that second half. That's not easy to do against that group. 
Yeah, I mean, I think Michigan could be the best team Nebraska's played all season, um, top to bottom. Uh, they're well coached, a disciplined, hardworking, big physical team. And, uh, you know, you dug a hole in the first half and 13 nothing. The, la the touchdown before the half was really disappointing. But, man, the adjustments were good. The, the third quarter was was incredible. And leading into the fourth quarter, um, to take the lead a couple of different times in the second half against a really good team, uh, you know, the kids, they, they played so hard and they did so many good things. And yet, you know, you look over at Michigan and they have great players too. And their, their guys are on scholarship and they lift and they eat and they get well coached and, and they made plays too. So it was back and forth. It was just a great college football game that in the end, they made a player two more than we did. And, and, um, uh, again, unfortunate. I, it's it's frustrating. I wanted it so much for the guys in that locker room, and they wanted it, and they did everything they could. It just it didn't work out Saturday night. But uh, there's still you know five games to go, and and I think these guys are determined to do everything they can to win as many as they possibly can coming home. Matt Davidson with us. Our Mondays with Matt here on Sports Island. You've played this game at this level. Talk about the challenges these guys are facing right now, having to play now. This will be their eighth straight week of playing football without the bye week. It's got to be stressful both mentally and physically on these, these players. Yeah, it, you, you, uh, when you play week zero, you start a week early. So we've been going since July. And uh, so, yeah, it, it's, been a, it's been a heck of a stretch. You look at some teams around the country have only played five games. Yeah. And we've played seven, and we have another one this week. And... It, it, Yet, I just, I, I just feel like these guys, as Coach Frost said today, I think they have plenty of gas in the tank. I mean, this team is, uh, this is a great practice team. It's a, a team that wants to prepare well. Um, you have to have the desire to, to come in every day and, and try to get better, and I think this team has that. I think the leadership in the locker room is better than it's ever been. And, and so they're pushing each other every day uh, to, to get better and better. And, and so, yeah, is it a grind? Yeah, it's eight weeks in a row, but I don't think they're tired. I think they're, they're ready. I think they, they, wanna, they, they enjoy playing with each other. They enjoy, they enjoy going into games and battling with each other against another opponent. And I think they're going to feel that way this week too. Minnesota's beat us the last two years. So this should be an easy game to get up for. Um, it's a beautiful stadium to play in, a day game. Um, you know, the off week will feel a lot better if you go get a win. So I don't think the motivation is, is uh, going to be waning at all. I think this team's going to be ready Saturday. Do you gear down some in practice this week because of the physicality of the last few weeks? Yeah, you know, Coach talked about that too. I, I, I think um, the last few weeks, you know, you, you try to gauge where your team is, and that's the coach's responsibility. It's a strength conditioning guy's responsibility to kind of know where the team is and uh, the health of the team and, and all of those things. And um, so it, they practiced this morning without pads on. Uh, they'll get back to banging tomorrow with pads on Tuesday and Wednesday. Minnesota had an off week a week ago, so they're going to be fresh and ready for Saturday. And, and so you, you prepare the best you can and, and get the physical aspect in when you need it during the week. And, and you encourage your guys to do all the things they can to recover their bodies as well as they can with hot or cold tubs and eating right and getting the right amount of sleep and all those things to recover your body to get ready for the next week. And our guys are they're educated on those things, and, and I think they're going to do everything they can this week. Gophers have had some key injuries. They've had a couple of losses. What's your early take in the week here on this team? I, I think they're really well coached. I think, you know, they, they have an identity of who they are. They're going to try to slow the game down, most likely. They, they um, will have seven offensive linemen on the field at times. I mean, they're going to go big and try to bully you down the field, and, and uh, they're well coached on defense. They have a good pass rusher. Um, and they, they're going to play hard for their coach and, the, and that staff. So that's kind of who they are. They're a, they're a normal, grinding, grindy Big Ten team that is, isn't going to give you anything cheap. So uh, it's going to be a challenging game for sure. And uh, I think our guys are going to be ready to go, um, try to get a win before the off week. All right, I don't know if you know, Minneapolis is known for a couple of good steakhouses. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if you've... I've been you know. there uh, to both of them <laughs> a few times. They both start with an M. Um, <laughs> I will not be going there Friday night. I'll be with the team, but man, I wish I could. Ooh. It's a it's a fun place to go for our fans because there's great hotel options 
and uh, dinner spots and all of that stuff. So I know a bunch of friends that are going up to the game, and they kind of make this their road game every other year and try to go to Northwestern on those games. They go to Chicago and Minneapolis. And uh, so it, it's a fun trip for our fans, and hopefully we can put on a good show for them Saturday and get a win. Yeah, this isn't basketball where you have a little more free time to do some of your things. No. This is a much tighter Well, you get itinerary. in. I mean, it's like get in, dinner, um, Bible study, uh, meetings, go to bed, yeah. wake up, and breakfast, and go to the stadium pretty much with these 11 a.m. Right. I'm okay with that, too. We're back. We'll be back before it gets dark oh, here. See the night games. Absolutely. I don't know who's playing, but I'm sure there's something There'll good. There'll be something on. good. Yeah. All right. Good to see you. Uh, let's uh, crank it up. We'll see you in the booth on Saturday. All right, buddy. Thanks. There he is. Mondays with Matt. Matt Davidson here on Sports Nightly. Phone lines open 402 413 2400. We uh, will take calls, texts on that. The chat room is open on our YouTube stream here tonight. That's been active over the last uh, 90 minutes or so. When we come back, we'll slip in some of the cut cuts from the head coach's press conference earlier today. We'll also take more of your comments and calls next. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information from manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. Welcome to Ag Answers, where we answer common questions related to farming and ranching. Today we're tackling the issue of GMOs, or genetically modified organisms. GMOs may sound scary, but they're actually benefiting our environment and consumers. That's because GMO crops help solve specific problems like insects, food waste, and droughts. By selecting good traits from one plant or organism and adding them to another, farmers are safely using science to produce high-quality foods better than ever before. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's Corn and Soybean Farmers. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. For the fourth year in a row, the University of Nebraska system ranked as one of the top 100 institutions worldwide in earning U.S. patents. The NU system was granted 38 patents, and of those, 27 were awarded to UNL researchers. The result? New startup companies, jobs, and university-licensed products that grow Nebraska's economy. Isn't it about time to add a new piece of Husker gear to your closet? Check out the new 255 collection, inspired by the legendary coach Tom Osborne. With the mission to connect style with Nebraska pride, 255 was designed with the fan in mind. From Hastings to Lincoln, coach to statesman, leader to legend. Thomas William Osborne, it's all in the name. It's all in the numbers, 255 wins. This is TWO55. Get yours today at shop.huskers.com or other participating retailers. For more information, visit huskers.com slash 255. There's a call on the field for a quality seed specific to where you farm. Make the right call with Prairie Valley. With local research in eight regions throughout Nebraska, Prairie Valley performs with their locally specific hybrids and varieties while achieving the highest quality and yield. No matter where you farm in Nebraska, Prairie Valley has the seed for where you are. Find a local dealer and learn more about the seed for where you are at prairievalleyseeds.com. Preparation. It's the key to success on game day. And like your favorite Huskers on the field, you need to be ready right from the opening kickoff. Senex has your pregame routine covered. We've got your salty snacks, your sweet treats, ice cold beverages to wash them down, and fresh tanks of propane to fire up the grill. Fuel your fandom at your local Senex station. Husker Pride, powered locally. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Lutz is an integrated business solutions firm born and raised in Nebraska with offices in Omaha, Lincoln, Hastings, and Grand Island. Lutz provides expert accounting, consulting, financial, technology, M&A, and talent solutions tailored to you. Lutz embraces your business as their own to discover the right solutions to help you thrive. They mind what matters for businesses or individuals seeking a partner to help energize and heighten financial and organizational success. Visit Lutz.us slash GBR. 
Freddy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addie's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addie's. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. From vintage sneakers to bacon scented soap to water fountains for your pet, all can be had with a few simple clicks. Problem is, you never really know what you're going to get until they show up at your door. Introducing Ford Blue Advantage. It's used car buying that's built for you. Not only can you shop for used vehicles online, in person, or both, you can also test drive before you buy, so you know exactly what you're getting. Plus, get history reports, vehicle inspections, Ford warranties, and the expertise of factory trained techs. Visit FordBlueAdvantage.com today. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare, advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team www.iowaworks.gov Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. Our Sports Highly Hotline brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations. Simplified car buying to save you time, shop finance, and buy it online at woodhouse.com. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you Monday night. The folks are fired up tonight. It's kind of fun. Yeah, it is uh, fired up in the chat room. We've got a lot of people watching and the text line. You you said it earlier. I can't even keep up with all yeah, the texts. They're and flying by me. Phone lines. I don't think it's been, have been empty all night. <laughs> no, it is not. 402-413-2400. <laughs> the number if you want to be a part of the program. Let's go up to Wayne and Ethan. Good evening, Ethan. Welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going? Good. Uh, I just wanted to talk about, like, you know, the fans this year, it seems like they're not near as negative as they have been the last three or four years, like when Frost start, first got the job. And I think that's huge because these players have social media and they see everything that you put on uh, the Internet and just makes it a lot easier for them to show up and play on Saturday, I feel like, when – they have a fan base that's back behind them, and the coaches, they can just relax and just play, and they don't have to be so, I don't know, so nervous about making, about what the fans are going to say, getting bad mouth on social media. I mean. That it? All right, Ethan, appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, no, absolutely. The players are humans. They see that stuff. And I think, for the most part, the fans like what they've seen the last couple of weeks, even though we haven't won some of those games. I think the fans see better football each week, and I think that's being recognized. I think it is obvious when you watch this football team that there is improvement and that it is a better football team. And absolutely, I mean, what he was saying, the, the, the players, I've been talking to them every single week, and the support behind them, you know, they were so excited to get back out in front of Husker Nation last week because of what they felt the week before against Northwestern. And even after the loss, all of them were commenting about how much fun it was to play in front of Husker Nation on Saturday and, and you know, the support and the belief that they've helped 
you know, that they felt behind them. Absolutely. I mean, like you said, they're human. It's going to fuel you when you have that positive reinforcement as opposed to someone coming at you all the time. Absolutely. No doubt. It's a good point, Ethan. Thanks for the phone call. Let's run out to Kozad and Al. Good evening. Al, you're up next on Sports Nightly. Good evening. Greg, just a great show. Love it. Keep it up. My big question is, what do you think about bringing back the fullback so we don't put Adrian in these short situations where we lead him with the ball and, and have the opportunity to do fumble? We've used the fullback a couple of times this year. Uh, Michigan State, we did down to the goal line. Right, right. I say bring it back to full time. That's, and the, our short yardage plays are what's killing us. We, you know, on the punts, too many punts. If we can get the short yardage plays under control, we would have walked down the field and scored that last touchdown and, and beat Michigan. Well, you certainly can't fumble. And that's, no, that no, was that, the big I cause. Say, don't put Adrian in that position. You know, put him, put him in a position with the fullback to run behind or anything like that to get that short yardage. Yeah, I mean, uh, I. Ryan Hell was in here a couple weeks ago, got asked that same question. We, we utilize it at certain times. Nebraska fans will never be satisfied. They want the fullback back in the offense, but that's just not a big component of this offense. And when you don't have a big component, you're not really recruiting for it, and you're not really using it. Yeah, and you're not going to put it in just, you know, in the middle of the season when that, you haven't been prepared for that. And they feel like they've got those two tight ends that, you know, help a lot in that right. in that situation in that scenario yeah let's uh, go up to omaha matthew you're up next here on sports nightly hey how you doing uh, just to piggyback off that that guy said i really don't see a fullback being recruited to a, a shotgun style offense um but that's just what he said uh but when i i was just kind of wondering like you know, mulling in my own head what's uh progress for this year and one of the things i would like to see is what we did with uh, Northwestern. You know, we, we took them to the woodshed. And um, so I'd like to see kind of like our peers inside the conference right now, if we're talking about Big Ten rankings. Um, we take Purdue, Minnesota, and we win convincingly. I mean, that, that's, that to me is progress. Uh, we continue to either beat <clears throat> Wisconsin, Iowa, or Ohio State or play them close. That's progress for me, too. Um, so was, what do you think about that? Does that sound no, like I'm it, on the right track? Or and that's, that's a fair point. You need to start doing to teams like we did to Northwestern and mm -hmm. say, okay, we know we're going to have big battles when we play Michigan or Ohio State or Iowa. But some of those other teams you need to get on top of and do what they did to the Cats a couple of weeks ago. And here's another great chance, Matthew, is Saturday with Minnesota. It's a team you need to get on top of and say, all right, yeah. you're, you're below us now in this, in the, where this pecking order is in the West. Yeah, I yeah, because, I, I mean, after last year, the uh, when they came in with, what, 22 players on COVID uh, watch or something, and they still came in and just took us out. I mean, yeah, so this, I mean, that would be, and, and you, you do that continually. That's that's what I want to see. I think Fair. Uh, the, our, our offensive players are, are coming around. I'd, I'd like to see... Betts and, and Omar Manning and, and Yant more, but, you know, Yant took himself out of that game, and I understand. I don't question Frost taking him out. Maybe come – I don't put him in, but I don't question him taking him out. Um, it's just – I just I think we really got a really good offense, and I think defensive-wise, at least watching Clinton do some, it's next year, come next year, it's, it's going to be plug-and-play for them. I think the, the, the defense has really solidified itself. I think the offense is just a year behind from – kind of competing as as our defense does fair points matthew appreciate it thanks for the phone call no that's 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 fair you've got you still have minnesota purdue wisconsin and iowa left to play for the division get on top of some of these teams and show them you've now passed over them well and even wisconsin i mean going into the season everyone thought they were a national title potential team and yep. you know and even though they've they've slipped up they've still got a really solid defense if you go you know score some points on Wisconsin that will also send a statement and send a message out because Wisconsin you know they still have had have shut down some teams in some kind of dominating fashion even though they can't score they still are a good de solid defense so if you go out there and your offense you know has a good solid performance against Wisconsin that would even be a statement but yeah those those two teams absolutely you want to make a statement over on our text line was hoping for a cold snowy game this weekend in Minnesota <laughs> looks like it's gonna be sunny in the 50s 
I disagree with that. I don't want cold and snowy. I don't know why would you want cold and snowy. We got enough of that coming in November. Yeah. Um, Let's get what, this one it, in. What is the forecast? That's 57, what it's sunny. Oh, that'd be, be nice. nice. Light jacket weather up there. All right, let's uh, let's hear from the coach. Um, he had a press conference earlier today. Let's slip in a couple things uh, that he talked about today. And I referenced this last hour about how sometimes you do things in the first half of games to set things up in the second half. So the Oscars went from scoring no points to 29. Here was what the coach had to say. Really, realistically, we, we could have scored a couple times in the first half, and that would have put us in a better situation. Um, uh, but, you know, doing some of the things we did in the first half set up some things for the second half for sure. I think uh, Coach Lubick and, and the rest of the offensive staff did a good job making a couple tweaks and, and pointing us in a couple other directions at halftime. And uh, we certainly had them in a lot of good plays in the second half and uh, did enough to win, needed to do a little more. Interesting answer there, and I, I, I kind of think I hope that backs up what I was talking about in hour number one. Now, this was an interesting question that he got asked today. It was like, you're playing well. You're hanging with these top ten teams. How close is this team to its potential? Here was the head coach. We still got a lot of ways we can get better, Sip. Um, we can continue to get better up front. We can block downfield better. Uh, there's been a couple little details right when we need them the most that have hurt us. Um, defense has played so well, but you know, one more stop here and there. Uh, we had one miscommunication on a coverage on one of their touchdowns. So those things happen during a game. Uh, when your margin of error is, is so slim, they can really hurt you. When it isn't, you don't even notice those things. Um, we, you know, we're playing a, a lot of good teams, and the margin for error in those games is small. And um, got to avoid those things. But uh, the guys are playing well. We can still get a lot better. It's kind of the perfect answer. I mean, we're playing well, but we're not playing our best game yet. I think that all the guys would agree with that. Yeah, and, and I've been saying that for the last, you know, however many weeks that there's been a lot of praise for the black shirts. But when I have conversations with them, they're like, no, we're not even close to how good we can be. And so that's also what's scary is that as good as the defense has really been since, you know, the, this whole season, really, they still haven't even hit their peak either. All right, now turning our attention to the Gophers, they are one of the best teams in the, in the conference as far as time of possession. They run the football, they run the clock down, they shorten the game, they, don't, they don't, don't allow you to have a lot of possessions in the game. The coach was asked, how do you combat that ability to get the ball away from them and, and try to get more possessions for yourself? You got to get ahead, I think, Sam. I'm, we got to start fast. And... Um, in a lot of these games that we play in this league, if we're behind, they can kind of play the game they want to and uh, run time off the clock, and that changes if you're not ahead. So um, looking forward to starting, trying to start fast, and I'm sure they are too, but um, we got to take advantage of whatever reps we get on offense because uh, sometimes there's more and sometimes there's less. All right. All um... right. I asked Matt this question earlier in the hour. How do you balance the workload after a grueling stretch of games and no time, no days off? The Huskers haven't had a bye. Minnesota's had a bye already. They didn't play in week zero. They've already had a bye week. And they haven't had the schedule that Nebraska's had either with the unbeaten top-ranked teams either. Crazy. So here was the coach talking about trying to balance getting your work in but also not wearing your team out here in the middle part of the year. Yeah, uh, we took the pads off them today. We usually have some part of practice on Monday, uh, good on good, and there's a lot of thumping on Monday. Um, we didn't do that today. I thought I just needed to give the guys a little break after a really physical game on Saturday, and they responded really well, uh, really clean practice, and the guys were dialed in today. So I, they're excited to play, and uh, I told them if anybody wants to play in the NFL, you know, you play four non, uh, preseason games and 16 regular season games and sometimes playoffs and you get one week off and that's after a camp and um, that is a, a grind. Uh, so eight weeks is a lot for college football, but our guys got plenty of gas in them. And we'll finish up with this. How does this team stay so mentally strong? Here was the coach's thoughts. Uh, yeah, I'm not really worried about this game um, from a from an energy and enthusiasm standpoint. You know, when when you're running sprints and you have to do 20 of them, it's not the 20th one that gets you. It's the 16th, 17th, 18th one. Um, 
you know, the guys know that, that we got a little break coming up after this game. Um, we've been trying to take care of them. So uh, Minnesota's got a good team. They're, they're well coached. Uh, it's on the road. It's going to be tough. Uh, but I don't, I don't think our guys uh, will fail to prepare and be ready for it. Yeah, I asked a lot of players about that after the game on Saturday, just about, you know, not getting caught up in the disappointment of uh, not getting the win when they expected to when they are going into games. And not a single one of them are worried or concerned about that. They've been preparing the way that they've needed to every single week, you know. And I think most of them are, are saying that the confidence is continuing to grow because as – Good is what we were just talking about. The the defense has played. The offense is kind of really starting to figure some things out the last couple of weeks. And so I think the confidence and then seeing the special teams. The game against Northwestern was really the first game that they've clicked on all three cylinders and all three mm -hmm. phases. And so I think that's provided them a lot of confidence. And then they, they again had another close to complete game, especially in the second half um, against Michigan. So I think that's providing a lot of confidence. I don't think that's dropping at all, even despite, you know, not coming out on top with the win. Caller early in the hour nailed it. They said the offense looks like it's maybe a year behind the defense. And so we'll sync it up next year. It could be pretty special. Could be scary. Yep, sure could. Buckle up, put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. 402-413-2400. The number to dot us up with a comment or question or fire off a text. More of the show. Straight ahead. It's football season. Husker Nation and Famous Daves is here to make your tailgate, house party, or get-together famous award-winning and house-smoked St. Louis-style ribs, Texas beef brisket, Georgia chopped pork, and house-made sides like our Wilbur beans, creamy coleslaw, and Dave's cheesy mac and cheese will surely tackle any barbecue craving. Visit FamousDave's.com for all your catering and online ordering needs, or come visit us at our locations in Lincoln and Bellevue. Experience car buying your way with Woodhouse. Our team is ready to help you shop, finance, buy, and deliver your next vehicle your way. From the comfort of your home or one of our 17 dealerships, you're in the driver's seat with Woodhouse. Plus, with our selection, finding your next vehicle just got easier. From new to pre-owned, work trucks to third-row SUVs, we've got something for everyone. Start shopping your way at Woodhouse.com or visit a Woodhouse dealership near you. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. What is HighBid.com? It's the online auction site for just about everything under the sun. Art and antiques, cars and coins, office equipment and furniture, toys and tools. You can find it all at HighBid.com. HighBid.com gives you access to thousands of auctions across the USA and around the world. Browse the most popular auctions, search for the exact item you want, or just explore the site. Go to HighBid.com. That's H-I-B-I-D.com and find what you're looking for today. Let Shelter Insurance get you in the game this football season. The Nebraska Huskers are gearing up for another big year, and this is your chance to win tickets from Shelter Insurance and the Husker Radio Network. Contact a Nebraska Shelter agent and and they'll register you for a chance to win tickets to one of four home football games this season. Only shelter agents can register you, so call, email, or drop by for your chance to win. Find an agent near you at shelterinsurance.com slash huskers and ask them to register you to win. You've trained for this all year. Endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. And now you are ready. Ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance, all without spilling a drop of your ice cold Bud Light. Welcome back to football, sports fans. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402 413 2400 with your Husker thoughts. 
score a game-winning drive when you buy your next vehicle at Sid Dillon Chevrolet. As a Chevrolet Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles, including medium-duty trucks and low-cab forwards. Whatever vehicle fits your needs, we're here to make the purchase process easy. Visit our Chevy locations in Blair, Crete, Fremont, or Wahoo. Plus, shop our full inventory at SidDillonChevy.com. Chevy, find new roads. Much like the values of the people of Nebraska, Nebraska Realty was built on the principles of hard work, dedication, and doing things the right way. They believe strongly in the power of creating lasting relationships and the value those relationships hold. Their success is based on trust and the relationships created with the people and communities they serve across the state of Nebraska. There really is no place like Nebraska Realty. Today's play of the day comes from Nebraska. We pick it up with the local sports announcer at a Nebraska Lottery retailer. Dave enters the store. He makes a move to the checkout counter. Looks like he's going to pass. Yes, he's passing the clerk a few dollars. The clerk takes the handoff and spins around. It looks like he's placed the scratch tickets on the counter. And now Dave has them in his hand. It's the old scratch Scratcherewski. He scratches left. He scratches right. Oh, my. He's done it. Dave has scored a bundle of cash. Play is good. Go play. Odds vary by game. Triple B Feed has the products to help your cows thrive. Whether it's weekly delivery of consumption-controlled Lumix liquid minerals with protein or Redmond natural mineral salt for livestock or humans, Triple B has you covered. Let Brian and Brad Blahorn take some of the stress out of your beef production this year. For more information and other products, visit TripleBFeed.com. Triple B Feed, helping you and your cattle. <laughs> If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. You trained for this all year. Endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. And now you are ready. Ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance. All without spilling a drop of your ice cold Bud Light. Welcome back to football, sports fans. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas, Acres Solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you Monday night, Sports Nightly here on the Huskers Radio Network. Let's go back to the phones, up to Omaha. And Mike, good evening, Mike. You're on Sports Nightly. Would you guys agree Harbaugh was a more uh, sympathetic character when he was quarterback of the Bears and Ditka was screaming at him all the time? <laughs> I'm sure he still remembers that pretty well. Uh, I mean, you had a feel for him then, and boy, I feel for Adrian because uh, I thought for most of the second half, he was fantastic. But you cannot fumble at the end of a game like that. And then even after that, we had a chance, sure, to get a field goal. And uh, and then there was a, a relatively easy pass. I mean, you agree, was it to Falk? That probably would have got us in field goal range. And those are things he can do in his sleep. So I, I got to admit, I'm confused about, I mean, is it because he's taken a lot of hits during the game? Because uh, he made so many tough passes, passes that he's had trouble with in the past. There's so much, you see what I'm saying, so much improvement that I don't understand that at the end of the game doing that. Yeah, that's that's all very fair. We had a caller earlier that kind of said some of the same things, and that that's right. I mean, the Falk, missing Falk was the biggest play to me of that last drive because I don't know if he gets the first down, but he certainly gets a nice positive gain, and we get much closer to field goal range. That's a throw Adrian has to make, and he'd be the first one to tell you that. And that's what's kind of prevented him, I think, Mike, from being just an elite-level quarterback because he doesn't make some of those plays. Greg, three years ago, the week of the Minnesota game, I called this show and I said, one of these games, Adrian's going to put it all together and it's going to be something to behold. And he did it that week against Minnesota. And P.J. Fleck, when he got back to Minnesota, and it was a pretty bad beating he took, 
I think he fired his defensive coordinator after that game. He said they got a Heisman guy at quarterback. And I think most people felt Adrian was the second best freshman quarterback in the country behind the dude from Clemson, who was the number one draft pick. I mean, would you agree with that? Yeah, I, uh, you know, I think Adrian has certainly had a big upside since he got to Lincoln. And I think he's had a really good career. But, Jessica, you got to make plays in certain situations late in the game to kind of cement your legacy, and he hasn't to this point, unfortunately, not been able to do that. Yeah, and you just got to hope. I mean, hopefully they'll take care of business, as we heard the caller say earlier, and kind of, you know, make a statement against a couple of these teams. But you hope you, he gets another chance to kind of right that wrong because right. – you do want a guy like that to have that opportunity where he can go win a game. So, and once you do it once, you never know what happens after that. It could open up the floodgates. Mike, appreciate the call. Let's go to Grand Island next. Richard, you're up on Sports Nightly. Yes, I wanted to comment on the last series, uh, that fourth down play. What was refreshed my memory? Was it fourth down and was it eight? Fourth and ten. Yeah, it was fourth and ten. Fourth and ten. And we threw the ball what was it, 20, 30 yards? Yeah, we tried kind of a fade, fade pattern. I, I don't like fade routes. I've said that before. I, I don't like that call in that situation. I'm, I'm with you. Well, the thing, what I'm not seeing is I think all our pass plays are going down the field. We need, used to be called, I'm old school, so this is going to be called a button hook. The receiver goes down, curls back, and comes back toward the quarterback. You know, and or a comeback pattern, and you know, make that play, get the get the defensive guy off your back. Um, I'm going back to Minnesota game last year, third and eight. We did the same thing, threw it, thir- you know, 30 yards down the field. We need as a first down badly. I, we're not utilizing that middle of the field, and and Michigan burned us three times at least on that delayed tight end, and we're not using that middle of the field on the short throws. I'll fair. just listen to what All you guys right, Richard, say. Fair point. Now, they did the second down, the throw that Mike, the previous caller, referenced. That was a little route mm-hmm. over the middle to Falk that Adrian missed. So, of the four incompletions, that was one of them. I kind of wanted to go back to uh, the. And we the, tried to screen on third down, too. Right. I, I, so. I kind of I wanted to go back to, I was just thinking about. There are some games that we're not in without Adrian either, that it doesn't come down to him making a play at the end of the game either because, you know, there there have been some times where the offensive line has not protected him well and he's gotten, gotten him out of some situations where perhaps the game's not as close as it is. So absolutely he's got to make the plays at the end of the games. He says it. He says it. But I also think there are some games that don't come down to the last play of the game either without Adrian. I don't think Nebraska's in the Michigan State game no. without Adrian. No. You know, let alone having a chance to win the it late. The Oklahoma game. The Oklahoma game. He was terrific. So the four plays, he threw a pass down the field on the Nebraska sideline at two ran first down. Then the little over the middle pass to Falk that he overthrew. Then a screen attempt to Ramir Johnson and Coach Frost said they were one block away from that screen. So there were there was a pass over the middle and then a screen and then the fade pattern down the sideline uh, that went incomplete. Those are the four pass plays. So one was over the middle and one was a screen. So that wasn't all just shots down the field. Yeah, I mean, and I think, too, I, I wonder, and again, I I need to go back, but the a lot of times, too, maybe you, you would look to throw maybe those shorter passes to the tight ends or having to help block a lot. Right. So you don't maybe. To protect. Yeah. They're having to kind of line up there, you know, on that, what, that right side to help uh, kind of that right side of the line. And that's a lot of times where that those short passes would be going to. Right. Nebraska 811 says, go dig red. Before you dig, always call or click 811 to have your utility lines marked. It's free. It's easy. It's the law. That is a great point because we had to max protect a lot because we were having trouble blocking those guys. Yeah. So you had to keep Austin and Travis back in, and that limits what you can do some in your passing game. Late to the break. We're back to name our weekend winners next. The name on the mailbox may say Smith, Myers, Baumgartner, or Johnson, but when you choose to plant with Rob Seco, it includes your name too, making you a stockholder in a company that's invested in you. With a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, relationships that bring more to the table, the technology, traits, and genetics that take on local conditions, and people with the know-how to use it. At Rob Seco, the only stockholder we listen to is you. 
Today's play of the day comes from Nebraska. We pick it up with the local sports announcer at a Nebraska lottery retailer. Dave enters the store. He makes a move to the checkout counter. Looks like he's going to pass. Yes, he's passing the clerk a few dollars. The clerk takes the handoff and spins around. It looks like he's placed the scratch tickets on the counter. And now Dave has them in his hand. It's the old scratch Scratcherewski. He scratches left. He scratches right. Oh, my. He's done it. Dave has scored a bundle of cash. Play is good. Go play. Odds vary by game. Finally, it's time to tailgate, to find your spot in a sea of red, to get together with family and fans, and to share what makes Husker football season the best. This season, share Valentino's tailgater tradition with their big red double jumbo deal and get two one-topping jumbo pizzas for only $17.79 each. Order yours at Valentino's.com. Some restrictions apply. See store for details. Valentino's, the official pizza of the Huskers. Go Big Red! Successful farmers must make good decisions every day. In pivot irrigation, the choice is simple. TNL exclusive hydraulically powered pivot irrigation systems are like no other. You get tough, reliable, and cost effective irrigation. Let TNL's 60 years of irrigation experience work for you. Call your local TNL dealer or TNL irrigation company today. TNL, like no other. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's football season. Husker Nation and Famous Daves is here to make your tailgate, house party, or get-together famous. Award-winning and house-smoked St. Louis-style ribs. Texas beef brisket, Georgia chopped pork, and house-made sides like our Wilbur beans, creamy coleslaw, and Dave's Cheesy Mac and Cheese will surely tackle any barbecue craving. Visit FamousDave's.com for all your catering and online ordering needs, or come visit us at our locations in Lincoln and Bellevue. Welcome to Ag Answers, where we answer common questions related to farming and ranching. Today's topic, animal agriculture. There's been a lot of talk suggesting that giving up meat is good for the environment. However, livestock emissions only account for less than 4% of greenhouse gas emissions, according to the Environmental Protection Agency. Also, by reducing meat in your diet, you're missing out on all sorts of beneficial nutrients like protein, iron, and zinc. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's corn and soybean farmers. Back in our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas, Acres Solutions for every field. All right, weekend winners. So I I feel awful. I didn't get the names, but there is a, a couple and some fans that were sitting close to my parents. My grandpa came up. He's 85 about to be and came up. He went to his first football game in 50 years wow. and got to check out the Huskers, and they loved it, and they said the people around them were so nice, so helpful, so welcoming, help him get up and down the stairs. And so there's a, a group of people that were sitting around my parents. If you're listening, text in. Let me know uh, who your names are. I wanted to give you guys a shout-out because nice. my parents said they just made them feel so welcome, and they had such a great time sitting sitting next to that group of Husker fans. Cool. Well done. And that does not surprise me. Husker fans nope, are nice not at like all. that. My weekend winner is Ty Robinson. Two reasons. He got the George Sullivan Scholarship awesome. Award winner. George is the longtime trainer for Husker football. Decades of doing that. Great for him. And he got his first sack yes. as a Husker, which led to the Big Mac sack of the game. Which you took and advantage I, of I today, and Big Andrew Mac's got tonight. one. Andrew got the benefit of my free Big Mac tonight. <laughs> so Andrew owes me. He does. Keep those Big Mac sacks coming. Yeah, we didn't get them for a couple games, but it was back today. In fact, still time. You, it's still all through Monday, so you'll still have time, folks. You want to get out there what and get What a great your, promotion. Good promotion. I think this is the year five or something like that for this deal. It's been around for a while, but very, very popular. And you can even hear people kind of yelling, Big Mac sacks. I know. <laughs> I, love, I love it. I love it. Cool stuff. Free food is always the best. And it does work. Nebraska 811 says, go dig red before you dig. Always call or click 811 to have your utility lines marked. It's free. It's easy. It's the law. That's going to put a wrap on tonight. Great show. Thanks, for everybody, for being a part of this one. Love hearing everybody's takes on this. Whether you made a call, you sent us a text, or if you're in the chat room having some fun. Mondays there. have been fun. They have been. Even they, though, they fly by. Even coming off these disappointing games. They, they the have fans been have been fun. great calling in and texting in. They have. Back tomorrow night. Another full two hours headed your way. Have a great night.
Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Woohoo! Business Technology 1, Network Downtime 0. Being a game-winning IT network takes hard work and an experienced technology coach. That's why our game plan includes Marco. Marco helps our entire business infrastructure perform better and score big day in and day out. With Marco's veteran experience guiding our team, every season is a winning season. Find out what your technology could be saying at marconet.com. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker Athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Lutz is an integrated business solutions firm born and raised in Nebraska with offices in Omaha, Lincoln, Hastings, and Grand Island. Lutz provides expert accounting, consulting, financial, technology, M&A, and talent solutions tailored to you. Lutz embraces your business as their own to discover the right solutions to help you thrive. They mind what matters for businesses or individuals seeking a partner to help energize and heighten financial and organizational success. Visit Lutz.us slash GBR. Much like the values of the people of Nebraska, Nebraska Realty was built on the principles of hard work, dedication, and doing things the right way. They believe strongly in the power of creating lasting relationships and the value those relationships hold. Their success is based on trust and the relationships created with the people and communities they serve across the state of Nebraska.